Today's vlog, we talk about babies. But before I start talking about pole vault babies, <laughs> before I start talking about pole vault babies, look what Carrie's niece did to her puppy, Aria. What about yourself? My eyes? My personality? Can it be anything or is it physical? Yeah. Do you guys ever feel like that when you're on a date? Hajime! Welcome to the Pole Vault Vlog. It's a vlog where we talk about nothing but pole vault stuff. Pole vault everything, including this new segment I would like to bring to your attention. Future pole vault babies. Future pole vault babies! Woo woo! There's a lot of news about babies being born. Well, they're not necessarily born yet, but they will be born soon. Jack Witt just announced that he is going to have a baby boy. Not Jack himself, his wife's gonna have the boy, but Jack helped create it with, um, he's a pole vaulter. <laughs> and used his pole. Also, Jordan Scott is gonna have a baby too. It's gonna be a little girl. It's gonna be so cute! Annie and Casey Burlingham down at Dean Starkey's place in Arizona also had a baby recently. She was super excited because now she has another med ball she can use. The most interesting part is what do you think these babies are gonna look like? Jack Witz will come out probably all camouflagey. I can imagine what Jordan Scott's is gonna look like. And last but not <laughs> This is kind of fun actually. <laughs> Sean Young is not having a child that he is aware of, but could you imagine what that thing would look like if it did come out? What would happen if Jordan Scott and Sean Young had a baby? Ugh. That's enough for pole vault babies this week. Yeah. I forgot to tell you, Daniel Ryland also had a baby, and if it's anything like Scout, it's gonna be one of my favorite babies of all time. Just saying, I need to go down to Florida and visit that. I need to visit that family again, because they are phenomenal. So congratulations to everyone who had a baby and is going to have a baby and if I didn't put you in here, congratulations to you too. All right, let's review some videos. This one's from Drew. He was a 17 foot high school kid in college now. It's a really, really good jump. So the first time I saw this, I sent Drew a message that said, uh, I just want you to think about a little bit more horizontal takeoff. Like I want you to really jump forward instead of being in a big hurry to get that swing up. He's jumping up a lot, and I wanna see just a little bit more horizontal takeoff. When you start coaching at these higher levels, things start changing a little bit, you know? So you can start playing with the finite, minute details. I mean, if you watch his takeoff, his arms up nice and early, he's leaning forward, you know, his chest is in front, you know, that's pretty straight right there. And then here's a really cool lesson. He sent me this this week. If you, could, if you watch it, everything just looks a little bit slower. He's definitely jumping forward more, but he was like, I'm just really frustrated. I don't know why it's not working. And you gotta remember, in college, you are you, you train nine months out of the year. So right now, he probably started in September, and it's November. So he's getting into the like the crappiest phase of his training right now. So everything's gonna feel kind of slow and sluggish. And I was just like, man, just be patient with it. You know, technically everything's starting to look really good. And then as soon as your wheels start coming back on, your wheels being your legs, you're gonna jump super high. So don't stress it, just trust the training. And so yeah, keep it going. All right, we got four more, so I'm gonna try and burn through these a little bit. This is Alec from Glen Clovis. Nice. Right hand, right quad. Nice, man. So I'll try and keep it really simple since it's kind of hard to see since it looks like you're vaulting at night. But this takeoff, we're kind of jumping and driving with our hips instead of our chest. So if you can drive your chest a little bit more, it's going to create that bigger stretch reflex and everything's going to be awesome. Just lead with your hands. Don't be in such a hurry to get that swing going. The swing will come on its own if you have a, a proper takeoff position. Other than that looks great, dude. Just keep it rolling. Carney. Did I say his name? K-I-R-N-E-Y. Carney. I'm not really sure, sorry man. Nice early plant, just took it a little under. And 
Nice, dude. And the pole's just a little piece of spaghetti. So get off the spaghetti and get on a bigger stick. And then the only other option was just think about jumping off the ground. And it's like we're just kind of running right off the ground. I know people vault like that and uh, it, it works for a lot of people. Just the way I coach. And again, my I'm just suggesting options. You don't have to do it this way. It's just um, what I found works for me and my athletes. Just think about jumping. And if you think about physically jumping off the ground, that step's going to move back exactly where you want it. And then everything's going to feel great. But yeah, man, a lot of really awesome things happening here. Ooh, I love that jump, man. Really good. All right, two more. This is uh, Robert. Dude, really, really good jumps here. Right hand close, still just that little gap. But if you want to get the most bang for your buck, I would start right here. So we're leaning forward like we want. We're attacking the box. And then all of a sudden we're like, oh my God, there's the box. I'm going to lean back a little bit. I mean, it's human nature. If, if you want to investigate a beehive, you're not going to go stick your head in the beehive. That's just not how it works. You're going to kind of lean back away from it. Why are you investing in beehives? I don't really know. Sean, your analogies are stupid. But you're at, when, you, when you have some kind of fear or you're hesitant about something, the, the, you want your head, your body naturally tries to get your head as far away from the carnage as you can. So, and that same tr same's true for the pole vault. So if you see something and it's kind of feeling a little sketchy, most people lean back away from it. They lean away from um, what feels weird. So you just have to overcome that. I'm gonna lean forward into it with my chest, not your hips. So you want your chest leaning forward, not your hips. So if you look right here, you know, if we draw a straight line from your top hand to your foot, we have an angle going backwards we want to switch that angle and make it go forwards by leading with your hands and have your foot behind you a little bit i hope that makes some sense other than that i mean if you can just change that just that positioning at the takeoff you already know what to do in the air man it's gonna be really fun another really good jump man you guys are these are fun to watch okay this one's really fun because it it comes from tim nelson and if you guys are N nelson or nelson tim it comes from Tim. So Tim was one of the first guys to send me a video way back when. Plus this is the, the, the barn. I love that place. I've never really been there, but it's St. Saint, St. Saint Clair's. So he said, after he sent me that video and all I told him to do was get his arm up a little bit earlier that he did it and he jumped nine inches higher. So here's that first video. Let's take So this is that goofy one where he jumped off his right foot, but I just told him to get his arms up a little sooner. So let's see if he's jumping off the right foot now. Nice, he's jumping off the left foot. Let's see how early those arms were. Ooh, way better than it was, man. Look at that, just a little bit of a bend in that elbow. Nice, and then we're just tugging really hard. So here's my recommendation. All right, so when most people take off, they take off nice and tall, and then they don't know what to do. They're like, I need to get upside down. So they either pull or they just swing right away. But reality, once you plant the pole, I always say try and knock down the crossbar with your hands. Push everything up towards the crossbar. And if you do that, that's gonna create your swing, create the, the proper, physics components that you want in the pole vault. My kids always get sick of me saying, I want you to knock down the crossbar with your hands, or I want you to high five a giant. Like, if you high five someone who's little, you're, you're just going, eh. Doesn't work like that. You gotta get your hands up nice and tall and keep reaching as you're going forward. And that's what I think you should try and do. Try and, and if you don't have a bar, try and knock down the bungee with your hands, both hands. I don't wanna see one hand and then one hand pulling in. I wanna see both hands going up forward towards the crossbar. If you do that, everything's gonna work great. Thanks for sending me videos this week, This, you guys. Uh, these are really fun. That's about it for this week. I don't really have any other pole vault news. If you guys want your videos reviewed, send them to sean.francis19 at gmail.com. I will, five started to be a lot this week, so I'm probably gonna limit it to less than that. So first come, first serve, or um, yeah, if you sent me some in the past, I'll look at those right away too. 
Can you guys believe this is 100 vlogs in a row? So for 100 days, I have made 100 vlogs and it took like three and a half years to get 100 vlogs the old way I was doing it. It's kind of ridiculous, but kind of cool. I'll be in Vegas this weekend filming a video for Bubba Sparks, so that'll be really fun. I get to hang out. So if you guys have any Bubba Sparks questions or want me to ask him questions, let me know. He's a master's pole vaulter, gold medalist. He knows his shiza. Yeah, life's meant to be experienced and curiosity will get you there. See you tomorrow. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Bow, bow.